Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Frigate Pilots Manifesto, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about the different frigates in EVE Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the more unusual frigates from the Minmata Republic ship tree, the Tech 4 E-War frigate, the Vigil. Now, I've mentioned before in the Crucifier video that I think the Tech 4 E-War frigates are criminally underused. Not only are they absolutely amazing when used in fleet operations, both for PvE and PvP, but they are actually very powerful as little solo ships too, and that's what I'm hoping to showcase in this video. We're going to have a look at the Vigil, what its stats and attributes are, how it works, we're then going to talk about how you would use it in fleets, and we're going to fit it for solo operations and then showcase it in action. Now if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to make sure that you never miss an upload, and of course let me know in the comment section down below what ships and what topics you want me to cover in future episodes. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, I do have a Patreon, and we have a Redbubble merchandise store if you've ever fancied representing the Catskull Cartel or the Catskull Academy on various things like hoodies, t-shirts, stickers, water bottles, that kind of thing there. Finally, before we jump in on this one as well, today does mark another giveaway. I have four Combo Omega to give away, four single months of Combo Omega to give away, and all you have to do in to enter is to let me know in the comment section down below what your favourite frigate is and why. Doesn't need to be a huge essay, just a short little I like this ship because I think it's really cool is enough to enter. The winners will be selected next week and alerted via here on the comment section on YouTube to then contact me on Discord with their details so that they can claim their winnings. Anyway, that all said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about the Vigil. The Vigil is found in the Minmata Republic ship tree up at tech level 4. It is of course their electronic warfare frigate, here it is, a very unusual looking ship. Now the Minmata don't tend to use this kind of upright design in their ships, in fact other than the Vigil, in EVE Echoes the only other Minmata upright ships you'll find are the Tornado, which is a battlecruiser, and the Tempest battleship. So the Vigil is quite an unusual looking design on its own. Now it was actually created to counteract Amar tracking disruptors. The Republic couldn't afford to upgrade tracking subsystems across the entire fleet, so instead opted to create a frigate capable of mounting effective LTD systems, LTD standing for Laser Target Designation. Now, although most commonly used as a support ship um, to provide a larger target profile for friends to lock down and destroy, the Vigil does have limited combat potential of its own. Now, these big panels that you see on the front here as well are designed to house the core complexion Drykus Ladar Array, which is the largest such array ever fitted to a frigate. The top half of the panel is also almost entirely dedicated to complexion second generation DD200 nanomechanical control mainframes, which are required to sift through and analyse the incredible amount of telemetry data that that LADAR array provides the ship. Now let's have a look at the ship's attributes and fittings then. Of course the Vigil features that same fitting profile as the other Tech 4 E-War frigates with two high slots, two mids, two lows, two combat rigs and two engineering rigs. That means that there's not much choice really as to, you know, you don't have much variety here. You do need to specialise into what you want to do. You can't, you don't have space to fit unused systems or systems that you kind of might use on an off chance. You need to very much fit this ship for a specific role each time you undock it. Now, talking about not much space as well, 37 megawatts is a pretty small power grid, especially considering that small strike cannons are some of the most power grid hungry small modules in the entirety of EVE Echoes. If you want to fit the Vigil with small strike cannons, you are probably going to need to either uh, level up your frigate engineering or use one of the ancillary power grid router rigs in order just to get that little bit of extra space. It also means there's no way in hell we're really going to be fitting medium or you know other oversized modules onto the Vigil. That said though, on the opposite end of not much space, the cargo hold capacity of 500 cubic meters is very large for a Minmatar frigate. In fact, I think the Vigil is the largest cargo hold of all of the Minmatar combat frigates. I think it's literally only beaten by the probe, which of course has no real combat potential in and of itself. The probe is designed 
as the kind of ship that is going to be cargoing stuff back and forward. Now that means that the Vigil, as I said, whilst it can primarily be used in fleet engagements, it is a very good solo ship too, and I can clear Tech 8 encounters with this thing quite comfortably. Ultimately, this means you can be running those combat encounters whilst also doing delivery encounters on the side, or you've just got enough space to loot all of the things like the medium and perhaps some of the large modules that would drop in those encounters. Defensively speaking, 1297 is very fragile. It's a Minmatar frigate, and of course it's only tech level 4, so it's kind of what you would expect. Ultimately, if you look there, the shield doesn't even break 400, the structure barely breaks 300, and the armour is sort of middling between the two. This is quite a fragile ship, and if an enemy ship with something like medium or large weaponry does get a clear shot, you can sometimes be blapped off the grid in one hit if you're not careful. So of course, we just need to be careful and take that into consideration. Capacitors? Capacitors aren't bad for a, uh, for a Min Matar ship. Obviously we're not using capacitor with our high slots, if we're using turrets or missiles or whatever in our high slots, those don't require any capacitor per activation. So 382 gigajoules with a maximum capacitor recharge rate of 5.16 gigajoules per second is actually pretty good, and that does help us keep our E-War modules switched on and active for extended periods of time. It does then have a very small signature radius of 27.9 and a fast flight velocity of 468 meters per second. That's not surprising since the Vigil was designed to operate as a scouting ship um, on long range scouting missions. It is supposed to be quite hard to lock onto, quite hard to hit and very fast moving. And in fleet operations, that really helps because you can kind of hit your target with your, uh, with your target painter orbit it or keep at range and keep moving quite quickly and be a very difficult target to hit, which means the enemy fleet then has to decide whether or not you are worth taking out um, in order to get rid of the target painter or whether they just try and deal with the ships that are causing them damage otherwise. It means ultimately that you are that annoying little gnat in the enemy's ear and that works in both PvE and in PvP. I've used the Vigil in things like Tech 7 or Tech 8 in fact, um, Inquisitor and Scout Anomalies, as a target painter. Basically you have something like a couple of stabber fleet issues or typh uh, not typhoons, sorry, tornadoes sitting at extreme range. I go in with the vigil, I orbit the targets um, at a nice close proximity, I sit there doing a little bit of damage with my weaponry but I'm mainly target painting to make sure that my stabbers and the tornadoes can be doing extreme damage from the range they're at. And ultimately I take no damage from the entire fleet while doing so because I'm such a small fast moving target. It is an excellent little strategy. I haven't tried it in dead space anomalies yet, I probably should do so. Scan resolution of 483 millimeters as well is, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. For a frigate it's on the sort of, it's on the middling to lower end of things. It's not terrible, it's good enough for what the thing needs, but you're not going to be using the vigil as a gate camp point anytime soon. Finally then, looking at the bottom row, warp speed 5.5 astronomical units per second allows you to get where you need to pretty quickly. Again, that means we're getting 11 AU per second moving through high sec, um, and almost, eight, I think, 8, 9, I can, I can never do maths off the top of my head, very fast moving through low sec, we'll say it that way. Again, very useful for encounter running, because once you finish an encounter, you can get to the next one nickety split. The mass is fairly low, only 1.08 million kilograms, but it does have quite a high inertia modifier of 1.85 times. That makes it yeah, somewhat cumbersome. Um, certainly for a Min Matar ship, this is one of the more cumbersome out there, which you'd kind of expect when you see that it's a weird looking upright ship like this. Um, but it does mean that you're not going to be maintaining a very tight orbit without rigging for it. And of course, that's something we can look into later. Now, if we look at the trait description here for the skill bonuses, being an electronic warfare frigate, the tech for electronic warfare frigates, it gets bonuses from advanced frigate command and for signal disruption. Now, signal disruption is that new skill that was added in the October-November update um, that basically gives you the ability to uh, to actually uh, to, to use those different electronic warfare systems, the sensor dampeners, target dis uh, tracking disruptors, guidance disruptors, and here, of course, on the vigil, target painters. And you're getting a 5% increase to target painter target effects. Now, remember, target painter's job is to increase the signature radius of the target. This means at full signal disruption 5, on top of the, uh, the skill itself already giving you additional bonuses to the uh, target painter, you're getting that additional 25% target painter effects. That means if you were using 
using a target painter that is going to do, say, for example, 20% increase to a target signature radius, it's actually going to do a 25% increase to the target signature radius. If you had one that's doing, you know, say, 100% increase, that's going to be a 125% increase. It's a big increase and makes that signature radius much bigger, which helps any ship out nearby that's going to be hitting it. Now, for the Vigil, if you're using it solo, well, the, the, obviously the, 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 the target painters aren't overly useful when you're soloing, but they do have their uses against things like the things like drones, um, if you're going in PvP, or indeed in PvE, some of those faster moving interceptors, you can just make that signature radius that little bit bigger, means you're getting more of the sort of the penetrates, hits and smashes, and less of those glances and grazes, just because it's a bigger target. That's not necessarily a terrible thing. And certainly then for Advanced Frigate Command, we're getting a bonus of 8% to small cannon damage, 40% at full training, and a 5% increase to small cannon accuracy falloff, 25% again at full training. Now that small cannon accuracy falloff works well whether you're using strike cannons, you get a lot of extra range out of it, or whether you're using auto cannons, because as we mentioned, the Vigil itself does have a fairly high inertia modifier, which means it struggles to maintain a tight orbit. As such, you can have a slightly looser orbit and still be within a good amount of accuracy fall off you know you're still close to the optimal range and the accuracy fall off's not reducing your damage by that much very very powerful little skills there that make the vigil surprisingly good as i said both for fleet operations pve and pvp and for solo encounter running the fit that I'm going to showcase here is the fit that I personally use on my video. In fact, we are on the live server for the entirety of this video, so it's based on my skills, based on my ships, my fittings, all that kind of thing. Now, I use this both for PvE solo ratting, and it can clear Tech 8 encounters, no problem at all. Tech 9 encounters are... Mm, as long as you're paying attention, they're pretty fine. Obviously, I haven't tried Tech 10 encounters, and I know that this is not capable of doing Tech 10 storyline encounters. Don't ask. Tech 10 storyline encounters, everyone seems to be fascinated, can a ship do this? If the answer to that question is no, what's the point in that ship? Tech 10 storyline encounters are rarely the best way of making money. I know I have harp on about this, but I'm just astonished every time I see it. Like on Reddit, on the comment section down here, even on Discord, a lot of people are completely focused on those Tech 10 storylines. Quite frankly, I find that doing Tech 8, Tech 9 encounters, I earn a good amount of money for clearing the encounters, good amount of bounty for clearing the ships you get a good amount of loot and then I just sell the skill card that uh, be at the, the encounter scrolls at the end and make major bank that way it's one of the easiest ways to make money in my opinion anyway so I run tech 8 and tech 9 encounters with this ship I have run tech 7 um, inquisitor and scouts in a fleet and I've done PvP roams with this ship as well and it works beautifully for all of that now, first of all then, for the high slots, I've gone for small autocannons, in this case, Republic Fleets. Yes, they've got that short optimal range, but that long accuracy fall off means that even if I'm sitting at sort of 3 or 4 kilometers, I'm still doing almost all of my damage, and 156.16 DPS is nothing to be sniffed at from a Tech 4 frigate. Ultimately, my main role though, as I said, especially in PvE and PvP fleets, is not damage, it's to do with the, uh, with, with the target painter. Now, the reason I've gone for auto cannons rather than strike cannons, despite the fact that obviously the target painters do have a really good optimal range, is because this means I can orbit nice and close, I can then keep a very high angular velocity, which makes me a very difficult target to hit. Now, in solo PvE, that is obviously beneficial. I'm speed tanking for the most part. In fleet PvE and PvP, it means it's a difficult choice whether the enemy chooses to shoot at me and spend all their time and effort trying to get rid of me, or whether they just deal with the fact that there's this little gnat whittling away at their HP with Republic Fleet small auto cannons and making their signature radius bigger with those target painters. Now for the mid slots then of course we have a target painter because if you're going to be flying the vigil why would you not put a target painter on it? Well in fairness you don't necessarily need a target painter if you're going into PvE, you could put a Webifier in there, you could put a Warp Scrambler, that works quite nicely in here as well, um, but certainly as I said this fit is designed around me doing PvE both solo and in fleets and PvP roams as well. Now here you can see that the Republic Fleet Target Painter, which are still pretty cheap on the market, 36.25% increase to the signature radius of our target. 
target. That means that ships become an awful lot bigger, a lot easier to hit, and even things like your friendly tornado pilot are not going to struggle to hit targets at distance. You're going to get a lot higher damage against the target if you're marking it with this LTD Republic Fleet Target Painter. It's got a good op uh, optimal range, 34.5 kilometers, with a long gradual accuracy fall off of 69 kilometers. We don't care about that. We're going to be orbiting at about 3 to 4 to make sure we have that high angular velocity and that we can do that annoying little bit of damage with our auto cannons as well. Um, so yeah, if you find that the target has Weber fires, for example, and you don't want to get close yeah you can pull away to 16 kilometers outside of web uh, web range ignore the fact that you've got auto cannons just forget doing damage um, and just sit there with the target painter as well very useful in fleet now the second mid slot I've gone for is a medium group shield booster. You can also go for a large group shield booster here. Um, this has two knock-on effects. One, you can use this obviously to heal yourself in solo PvE. If you've watched my Dramiel video, you'll see how I use that there. Um, but certainly here, if you're going into the group PvE and PvP, it also means you're healing any other ship nearby as well. Again, chances are you're probably not going to be sitting nearby particularly, um, but it's just got that useful if someone else in your fleet is also going to be in a short range brawling build you can be hitting them for that 122 shield boost amount every 20 seconds as well sorry 15 seconds as well as long as they're within 12 kilometers of your range it does use fuel 300 gigajoules per activation so you need something like plasmids in your cargo hold just to keep that running obviously you can upgrade this to a large group shield booster as well if you wanted to um, and certainly if you're going to be sitting in the middle of an if in, in, in the middle of your own fleet and using the target painter from a range you can go for a large one there to make sure that you're healing up the rest of your fleet and you can swap those two high slots for things like remote shield boosters as well and go semi logistics obviously your main job is going to be keeping up that target painter and staying alive but you can do a little bit of logistics on the side you're not going to be as good as something like a burst or a burst 2 or a scythe or whatever but you are still capable of doing it which is really quite a nice little aside there now by having the shield booster uh, the group shield booster in the mid slots also frees up one of our low slots. I've gone for a Federation Navy small afterburner here. Um, this obviously allows me to speed tank in PvE um, and in PvP, but also allows me to move from A to B without absolutely killing my capacitor. Um, obviously, a, a micro warp drive takes off the top 25% of your capacitor. Mimitar ships don't have the best capacitor banks out there, and with the target painter using quite a, ma a large amount per activation, 17.1 gigajoules, I'd rather have a large capacitor that can f uh, to fund all of that. And again, I'm going to be using this for speed tanking. Now, I know a couple of folks in Catskull and Void are going to be uh, wondering why I was specifically after a Republic fleet afterburner recently, and um, to the point that when responded, some people sent me rangers and smugglers, and I was like, no, I need a Republic Fleet. This is why. I didn't want a Federation Navy. I wanted all the gear on here pretty much to be Republic Fleet, but sadly, there we go. Federation Navy obviously is exactly the same as Republic Fleet and everything but the name, but I'm a stickler for names. Anyway, finally then a Republic Fleet. Gyro Stabilizer, Weapon Upgrade Module, Additional Damage, Faster Activation Time. You know the drill with how these things work by now. That's how we're getting 156.16 DPS, and we can activate it to boost that even higher. For our rigs then, combat rigs, I've kept things nice and simple, this is a frigate, we want to keep it nice and cheap, no point going mad on the rigs um, and filling that out, it's not a faction frigate or anything for crying out loud. I've gone for two cannon burst aerators, these of course just increase the activation time, sorry, decrease the activation time adjustment, I'm thinking of increasing the speed of how quickly the cannons fire by 7.5%. There is a penalty for stacking two of these, but two burst aerators is better than a burst aerator and a collision accelerator if you're going for raw DPS with things like auto cannons, which of course we are. Now, if you happen to have some higher level ones of the burst air rates, I'm not going to you know tell you you shouldn't fit them. But again, I'm using level ones here and getting 156 DPS out of this. For the engineering rigs, auxiliary thrusters and polycarbon engine housing. Now, again, I've gone for Mark ones because I had these lying around. They're still ridiculously expensive on the market. I don't get why auxiliary thrusters one are still like 12 million on the market. That's insanely high. So if you've just got the prototype versions from the daily login rewards, go with those. It's more than adequate. It'll do the job. Just just fine. Anyway, it gives you an inertia modifier adjustment of minus 10%, which means we get that tighter orbit, accelerate and decelerate that a little bit faster, and of course the auxiliary thrusters give us the faster flight velocity. Now with everything there fitted, as I said, 156.16 DPS. Defense we can pretty much ignore because we're going to be speed tanking for the most part, but it's nice to see the shield has almost reached 600 at this point, 1861 in total. Capacitor is completely stable and it's quite comfortably stable um, as well. That's without an Osferatu or any 
anything there. If you found that you are really struggling for capacitor for whatever reason, either up your frigate engineering or you could theoretically swap in a, uh, a Nosferatu there instead of the target painter for PvE. Obviously, you lose all of your fleet capability there, um, but it, it, it's viable for if you're wanting to use this ship in PvE solo. Targeting, we have a signature radius of 28, it's 27.9 I think actually, um, but obviously very useful there. Scan resolution 555, thanks to my skills, good lock on time there. And then navigation, we're looking at a basic flight speed of 725.4 meters per second. That's a very fast flight speed. That is more than enough to speed tank in most engagements without the afterburner on, if needs be. You can actually turn the afterburner off when you are orbiting certain cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. I like to leave it running because we're stable anyway, but it does mean if something was hitting you with an Osferatu, you could theoretically drop that a little bit. It also means that with the afterburner running, if someone hits us with a web of fire, well, we're still probably going to be speed tanking with one web. It's only when you start getting hit with two or three webs that things start to really affect your speed tank. Anyway, that's said and done then, let's undock this and showcase it in some solo PvE action. We're coming now to the end of wave two of a Tech 8 Galente Federation combat encounter. Now, I'm about 17 minutes into this encounter, so it's taking about eight to nine minutes in order to clear each wave. Here comes wave three. You'll see that I'm sitting here at good, comfortable high 70s on capacitor, full shield, full armor, and full structure. Now, we've got a couple of test drone Atron interceptors and Algos Cs. Um, which we'll lock onto first. Obviously those small targets are going to be the bigger threat. Let's move in on those Algos, because yep, I expected one of those to be a Scrambler. Um, obviously a Scrambler is not a big threat really here. It's I'm not using a micro warp drive, so I'm not losing that. Um, but it would be nice just to be able to warp away if things go a bit pitong. Fortunately, I don't think that's going to be the case. You can see how little damage I'm taking here, even with all of these ships. I've got three small ships. Um, I've then got the, uh, what, three cruisers there and a battle cruiser. Um, and I'm just taking no damage at all. I'm using the target painter here on that test drone Algos C just to make sure that I'm doing more of the hits and smashes and penetrates and less of the grazes um, and glances. Obviously still going to get grazes and glances. And, oh, something hit me there for a bit of damage. Uh, well, no worry. We can easily take that up with the uh, the medium group shield uh, booster. I'm sure they used to be called group shield emitters at one point. I prefer the sound of a group shield emitter, but I get why they call it a group shield booster. Anyway, some people have asked, what on earth is an Algos C, or a Dragoon C, Talwa C, or Korax C? These are command destroyers. They were briefly available in either the open beta or the final test. I can't remember which of those two little open servers um, had them available, and they do sort of appear on Fulmination. I do need to check with the higher-ups if I'm allowed to talk about those, because they're not really known about. Um, and I might do a video showcasing those, although there's very little we can actually talk about because even at this point, we still don't know what command burst modules do, despite the fact that several of our battle cruisers have the capability to fix them. And trust me, the uh, the, the destroyer command versions that you've seen there have some really weird skill bonuses on them that I'm not entirely sure what they mean. Even with my knowledge from Eve Online, it looks like the uh, it does look like the command bursts are going to operate slightly differently. So we'll 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 see about that. If that's something you're interested in, perhaps a future episode of the Destroyer Pilots Manifesto might cover that one. Anyway, you can see quite comfortably here now, we're moving now onto the third ship in this wave. I've taken out the first Algos C, the, se uh, the first of the Interceptors, and I'm now onto the second Algos C. Um, obviously get rid of the small targets first, they tend to be the ones that can hit me for the higher amount of damage because they're using small weapon systems. I am still using the target painter just to increase their signature radius for the time being. Um, and you'll see there that the shield booster ultimately has taken me back up to full health. I'm sitting on very high capacitor, I'm sitting on full shields, I'm taking almost no damage at all here. Um, and it's giving me enough capacitor to use that gyro stabilizer pretty much with impunity and my capacitor can recover quite comfortably afterwards. Obviously the Vigil, as I said, small ship, fast ship, very good at speed tanking. And I've also just spotted local. No, I have no idea what our friend in local there is yelling. Um, <laughs> It's like his phone keyboard exploded and and now he's sad and got a broken heart because he needs to go and buy a new phone. That, that's the story I'm telling myself here. 
Anyway, now we come on to the Thorax 2 Guardian. This is where things are going to slow down a little bit in regards to clearing ships. I'm going to activate that gyro stabilizer just to get a little bit more damage. There we are, 433 on a smash. That's quite nice. 308 on a hit. We're getting some nice solid hits, smashes, some penetrates, that kind of thing there. That's why I'm leaving the target painter running, because it's not really using much of our capacitor. Um, and we, it means that um, by increasing that signature radius, I am less likely to get those glances. Obviously, I still get them from time to time. The game, I mean, random game is random, but I'm mainly getting hits and penetrates and smashes, um, which is kind of the key point there. Obviously, very tanky ships, and I know a lot of you have asked about the Cruiser 2 Guardians. Um, let me know in the comments section, actually, which one of those you'd like to see me cover first, whether it's the Moa 2 Guardian, the Mala 2 Guardian, the Thorax 2 Guardian, or the Rupture 2 Guardian, and I will actually cover one of those, hopefully, some point next week. I just wanted to get some frigate videos out of my system, because I miss flying these small ships and showcasing them. Um, and I just want some people to realise that actually the frigates are still very powerful ships and you can have a lot of fun with these things um, for very, very cheap. Because I think the Vigil, again, you can buy these on the market for like one and a half million. The fittings, the Republic fleet fittings, are dirt cheap across the board, except, curiously, the afterburners. But if you want to fit this with Mark V gear even, Mark V variants of everything that I've put on here, the whole ship will cost you less than 10 million easy, and it can comfortably do these Tech 8, Tech 9 anomalies, as you can see. No damage taking at all, very high capacitor, all hunky-dory there. Anyway, I think that does just about wrap up everything here that I want to say about the Vigil. You can see that this is quite comfortably doing these combat anomalies, and it's very much the same if you're in a group anomaly. You do what I'm doing here, and you just know that the fact that your target painter is also helping out your friends, and it's the same even in PvP. You kind of fly along with the tackle frigates, the tackle frigates lock down a target, you then orbit at that same range, you shield boost them with your group shield booster, and um, and of course, you mark that target with the target painter to make it even bigger for the rest of your fleet to take out. I'm astonished that I see so few doctrines using things like the crucifiers and the vigils. They are incredibly powerful ships. Let me know in the comment section down below if your alliance or corporation or whatever is using those as long as that's not going to break your sysop. Um, otherwise, though, thanks for watching this one right your way to the end, folks. Good luck flying the vigil and the other e-war ships. Hopefully, I've inspired a few of you to give it a go. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.